what's up guys it is another lazy sunday morning i have not been outside yet to do chores the sun's out so that's a, a positive but uh i wanted to get on here and have another chat with you guys uh, i really liked the last video and people seem to appreciate it so um, i've always got something to talk about so let's get after it today i am reflecting on my first hater comment. I had someone leave a very rude comment. It wasn't... I've seen the perverts, uh, not to me personally, thank God, um, and just the spam. I've got those before, but this was a rude comment directed directly at me and my farm, and it kind of said something along the lines of uh, they were glad to not be one of the animals under my care and that my farm looked awful. Um, the flip side of that, though, is any engagement you get on YouTube is still engagement. So it's still a uh, positive for my video, right? So um, they must have watched some of it and they must have watched other videos because the video that they commented on was actually didn't even show my farm or any of my animals. So um, I guess in a way, thank you uh, for the engagement. They even came back and replied after I replied to them, so, but it's my first one, my first hit, you know, and so of course it got me thinking a little bit, like, um, about the content that I'm putting out there. Um, they call me boring, which that's fine, like, you can always skip, right? But the attack on my farm and my animals, you know, of course I did take it a little personal, and that's one of my greatest fears about putting out content for the world to see is am I doing it right? Am I missing something? Is this really what I want people to see? You know, look behind the curtain. Um, you know, my house is usually dirty. <laughs> There's usually dirty dishes in the sink. And, uh, you know, my cages aren't always as clean as they probably should be. But part of that, I... I don't mind because I want people watching to see that you don't have to be perfect to be successful. I still have success. My quail cages are dirty. They still lay eggs when they're supposed to. You know, that sort of thing. Um, so, and then, you know, if I ever have a, you know, a sick animal or something, I'm very transparent about that. So it's give and take, right? Is, uh, uh, the criticisms and things like that. You're going to get that. And I'm trying not to let it get to me too much. But it did remind me of a really cool, great quote um, by Theodore Roosevelt. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up because I want to say it right. So you may have heard this quote. Um, it was made popular again by Brene Brown. And if you haven't read any of Brene Brown's books, you really should. They are awesome. Uh, she also has, I think, a couple of podcasts out now. Um, so I highly encourage you to check those out. But this is a quote um, from Theodore Roosevelt. And uh, keep it in mind anytime you get one of those haters coming at you, right? It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, but there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end of the triumph of a high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. That's an awesome quote. So basically, if you're not here with me, fighting next to me, get out of here. I don't need your shit. So I love that quote. It's awesome. Um, it's also... Uh, what Brene Brown um, titled one of her books is after that quote, Darren Grayley. Awesome book, highly recommend. Um, so along those lines, 
obviously reflecting on my farm and the criticism, you know, I wanted to reevaluate, like, am I doing this right? Um, you know, am I striving for improvement? And there's another quote um, that I use a lot in, in my head. I use it in my head. And that is, you can't improve what you can't measure. And that's actually a misquote. So it's from Edward Deming. And he's kind of the father of continuous improvement. And the only reason I know any of this is because of my factory experience. So uh, any factory that you go to, most likely if um, they're just a little worth their salt, they are talking about continuous improvement. And it actually, there's a lot of history behind it. Um, but Edward Deming is kind of the... Um, like I said, the father of continuous improvement, but a lot of that stems from uh, Japanese improvements um, like Kaizen and things like that. So if you're interested in that in the least bit, uh, look up lean improvement, uh, continuous improvement, Kaizen, that sort of thing. But the quote, like I said, is um, actually a misquote. Uh, what he said was more along the lines of you can't solely base everything um, on uh, measurable items along those lines. I won't pull up the real quote. I'm not too worried about it. But there is truth in the misquote. If you want to improve something, you should be measuring it. Just uh, coming out and telling my team, hey, we gotta, we gotta do better at safety. Do better. That's not gonna get you anywhere. So you should have something you're actually measuring on what is better. Um, obviously less accidents that's better but to get there what are you measuring to get to that point so you might measure um, uh, uh, safety observations you know that's gonna help us be more safety conscious and get to less accidents so um, I have applied that um, when I'm trying to lose weight can't lose weight if you don't know how much you weigh um, you know, oh, I'm going to eat healthier. Okay, well, why are you eating healthier? Well, because I want to lose weight. Measure that. So uh, part of measuring that for me is um, tracking my calories. So if I'm getting really serious about it, I know I need to track my calories. So how does this all apply to the farm? I say, oh, I want to be uh, better this year. You know, I want to be more organized with my garden. What does that mean? So while I'm not getting serious enough to actually go out and, you know, measure my harvest or things like that, um, I'm making sure I'm taking incremental and um, specific steps to that improvement. So, um, first of all, got organized, ordered my seeds early. Number one, start out on the right foot. Uh, I am now... <laughs> There's snow in my garden, so it's very hard to get it organized, but I'm kind of mapping out mentally um, Where I want to plant stuff. Uh, I even reviewed briefly with my brother yesterday one of my ideas for the tomatoes um, getting away from using cages That sort of thing. Um, I'm gonna start sketching out my map on kind of like what I exactly I want to lay it out I want to do it a little differently this year. Uh, I think I've mentioned in previous videos Inevitably, I've got this garden. Let's call this screen my garden. And this is the farthest from the entry. Okay, so when I start planting my uh, cold hardy stuff, I usually start right by the entrance. And so that's the part that gets all the goodies, all the compost, all the fertilizer. And then as the season progresses, I'm not as apt to get the goodies clear over here on this part of the garden. So I, I need to rethink that a little bit. I did start another compost pile, so I'm going to have that, you know, a little more to spread the wealth, that sort of thing. So that's something I'm thinking about so I can actually make those incremental improvements. Not true measurement in the sense that we would traditionally think of measuring, but uh, still something that I can point out that is how I'm improving with the YouTube channel. I've talked about that a little bit. And uh, there's tons of opportunities for measurement with YouTube. Analytics, boom, right there. They already have the metrics for you. So you can make up your own metrics, though. Um, I'm trying to think of one. Uh, say you have a character in your YouTube that is uh, extremely popular. 
and you want to make sure you incorporate them more frequently. So you, whatever, tally up how often that person, thing, animal is in your your channel, your videos. Um, sorry, Buddha is being very weird with Bell right now, and I will try to record it here so I can uh, show you guys exactly what he's doing. It's some sort of love affair going on right now. You guys are weird. You're weird. Buddha boo. Buddha boo. Maybe I should start calling this in bed with Jessa. Would that get more views? Would that be too clickbaity? I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to keep this short. I've already rambled enough. But I wanted to share those two quotes with you. Uh, one very specific, one me misquoting terribly. But if I do think there is truth in that. If you want to truly improve something, you should be measuring it in some way. Make up your own metric. It, it doesn't really matter what it is. But think about how do I get from here to here? What are the steps I need to take? Not just, eh, I want to do better. It's too broad. It's not going to get you to where you want to be. So don't worry about the haters. The hell with them. They're not in the arena with you doing what, the work that you're doing. And... Uh, Let's work on getting better, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.